Hey, welcome to SQL Talk. Today we're going to talk about a little bit of data engineering, data science. You know how they say with data science that you spend a lot of time acquiring the data, cleaning it, parsing it, kind of making it work. And so that was my experience with a, a recent project I was helping someone with. We had to grab uh, some Twitter data and all we had was the tweet ID. So we used a Python utility called Twark and then we hydrated those tweets pulled them into a file format that's called JSON lines. It's a little bit different than JSON itself, so we had to uh, do some manipulating of that. And then we pulled it into Power BI. So let me show you how we did that. Might help others out there uh, doing some analytics on their data. Um, thanks for watching. Okay, so we're gonna rehydrate or hydrate tweets based on tweet IDs. We're gonna pull that into Power BI so we can do some reporting analytics on it. So here's some websites that I used. Of course, you'll need your Twitter app. I'll show you that screenshot in a minute. You're gonna need the Python utility Twark. Here's that link. Said for Windows, if you're already on Linux or something, you probably don't need this, but I'm using Windows 10. Here's a Power BI link. And then this is the original data sets uh, from Harvard that we happen to be using. Uh, you may be using something else. Additionally, here's a, a nice website to check your JSON format. Um, here's an explanation, a good ex explanation between JSON and JSON lines. Then if you happen to be using an actual UI editor in Windows, this one's pretty good because it deals with really large files. I didn't end up using that, but it is good for <clears throat> editing like I had a six gigabyte data file. So a little bit on JSON, uh, AKA JavaScript object note, this is your typical JSON file here. You can see it starts and ends with the square brackets and then between each record you have a comment. Well, the Python utility twark that we use outputs this format. As you can see, each record is JSON, but it's not a typical JSON file with a start and end character. This is more convenient for certain command line Linux, Linux tools that you're gonna be using, maybe sed, awk, grep, etc but um, your Excel, your Power BI's, maybe other utilities are not expecting this. They're expecting this. So that's what we use said to qu quickly alter. Um, <clears throat> just um, for your information, if you're gonna pull in a JSON file to Excel, this is how you would do that. Hit the get data button from file from JSON. Then a couple pointers, once you get to that, it's gonna look a little funny. It's gonna look like this, and you may wonder what this is. So hit the two table button at the top left. Then you're gonna be presented with this screen, but you're not gonna see this, this, this list of columns that I have here until you click this little uh, innocuous looking button here. Make sure you click that, then this will make much more sense. You pick out all the columns that you want in your JSON document, and then it's gonna convert it to a normal looking table in Excel. Power BI has a very similar experience, just like get data, file JSON, and then you're going to be presented with very similar screens that I just showed you for Excel. Okay, so let's jump out to the internet here and I'll show you some of the sites that I went to. Of course, this probably isn't applicable to you, but this is a Harvard site that shows, <clears throat> gives you all the uh, tweets associated with climate change over a certain time period, uh, millions and millions of them. So this is where you could download those tweets so that you could go about uh, uh, hydrating or rehydrating from Twitter. Um, Twitter, you'll need to go to your application in Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, then you'll set up an app through this uh, address here. What's important is your keys and tokens. Um, you're gonna need all four of these, your API key, secret key, access token, and if you're already like me, look like this, you'll need to regenerate this so you can actually copy and paste these two things. Because uh, you'll need all four of these to run the Twark utility. Now on to Twark. I don't know what it stands for, but my guess is it's Twitter Archive Python library <clears throat> for retrieving this data. So this is the GitHub link that I'll put in the video notes for you. Also, once again, if you're not on Linux, Unix already, I went out to uh, this website to get uh, the new Win utility to run SED, S-E-D. 
And then if you happen to want to just kind of check to see if you have a valid JSON format, this would work with smaller files, but you can uh, upload your file here and check it. So this is a good database for that. Let's take a close look at our script. So this is the Twark script after we've installed Twark, of course. So we start here, and then we need to supply these four values, consumer key, consumer secret, access token, and access token secret. Once again, uh, where you get that is over here on developer.twitter.com, your app you've created. It's in the keys and tokens. So you've got the four, first two values here. And in order to get to these and copy these strings, you're gonna have to hit the regenerate button. So that's how you get those in here. Then we're using the keyword hydrate. Now what we're doing here, our input file is climate tweet IDs. That's all it is, is, is like this particular file was like a million tweet IDs. And the output of this is, it's gonna use once again, um, the Python utility using the Twitter API to go get that historical tweet information. So the output is gonna be put into climatetweets.jsonl. That's very important. This is the JSON lines file. So then we're gonna run said, we're gonna take, um, actually the very first thing we do is we just wanna put this bracket, left bracket at the very top of the file. Remember how we looked at the JSON format and, and this is what a JSON file expects is this left bracket. So we just echo that, which just puts it right into this file. So this file is brand new. Remember, it, it looks the same, but this is JSONL, this is JSON. So this is an empty file. All we've done here is put the left bracket. Now here, this is happens to be where my sed is installed. We're running the sed command line utility. We're using a regular expression is what this is. It's the S is for substitute. We're looking for the new uh, uh, end of line character. And when we get there, we're gonna add a comma to it. So our input file, once again, is the output of twerk. Input file here is the output of twerk, and the output is this same file that we've created here. So we empty file, we run sed through this entire file, and it goes and puts a comma at the end of every line and dumps it out to this file. And at the very end, all we do um, is we append the right bracket at the end. So now at the end of this ed script, we have a typical JSON file that utilities uh, are gonna expect when they're looking for a JSON file. And then um, just keep this in mind, this is for your notes, this is how we're gonna actually parse out the date column. Okay, so I, I've copied my twerk script. I'm gonna paste it in my editor here. And there's not many tweet IDs in here, so it ran really quickly, it took those IDs, uh, ran the Twitter API, and came back with the uh, full um, uh, Twitter information. In fact, if we just say type small.json.l, see this is all the Twitter information I got from that. So that's great. Now what we need to do, and by the way, when I ran this for like a million IDs, it ran all night. My file was like six gigabytes, but I didn't get kicked out of or shut down by Twitter for, you know, making too many API calls. So that was nice. So next we're going to run the little said script that's going to um, put the square bracket at the beginning and the end and then a comma at the end of every one of these records. So let's paste that in here. And um, so now we created another file, very similar, just doesn't have the L at the end. So let's type small.jsonl. And you can see, it's kind of hard to see here, but you see it's got the uh, right bracket at the end. And if we scrolled up, uh, we could see the left bracket at the beginning. Okay, we're on the home stretch. We are in Power BI Desktop that is uh, free to download for uh, Windows. It doesn't work on Mac, but you can use the published reports and data sets on the Mac. So we're gonna say get data file json let's point to our json file which is right there and now you're going to see this experience that i showed you similar to excel you're going to just say convert to table and this next just click ok on that one and this is important here click that little column picker and if you want all the columns fine just uh, go like that so this is now we haven't imported it yet but this is uh, uh, generated a table based on that JSON data. 
Okay, so you'll notice that this date that's been provided by Twitter isn't very useful. It's got the day of the week, the month, the day, the time. Um, I don't know what that is. And then, of course, the year. So let's click on this. And in Power BI, you just say yeah, split column. So we're doing uh, some transformations here. Split column to the rescue. And we're going to pick by positions. Remember those numbers I showed you? earlier i think they're already defaulted let me just paste them in there again this should do the trick we're splitting the column by this different position uh, these different positions so let's see what that now looks like okay now we have day of the week month um the, the day um and then the uh, time of course and then the uh, year so we've broken that out now we want to take one more step so we get a very usable date Okay, so in order for our reporting and analytics to really be as accurate as possible, let's add a column that's the actual date column that combines all of these. And typically you'd have to get kind of clever with concatenating and everything, but let's say we're gonna create a column from example. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab um, the month, the day and the year. I'm holding down the control key. So I've selected three columns. And I'm gonna say, create them from the selection. Create a column by example by selection. Now look what Power BI does. It says, okay, just start typing. What, what, what do you think? What's the pattern you wanna see? So I'm going to say, August 13, uh, then uh, 2018. So see what I did? All I did was, here's August, here's 13th, um here's uh the year so i said hey this is the example follow this example with everything else and when i hit okay it says oh yeah i get it i see what you're trying to do you combine these columns so it did that by uh you know it's going to do it for more than just august it's going to do it for all the dates so that's a pretty slick way to do that um so Let's just say OK, and then this is a merged column and you might want to rename it, call it D-A-T-E. OK, so we're kind of done with some initial transformations on this file and all we have to do is say close and apply. So we'll click that and it'll turn it into a table. So that's, that's one way to pull in some raw data and to do some transformations on it in Power BI so you can do some reporting on it. Okay, almost into the video right there, but how can we come this far and not actually create some visualizations? We're in Power BI. Uh, we just clicked close and apply with that whole query we did to transform the data. And here's our data. Here's all the data. So let's create a very, very super quick report. We're going to click our table visualization here. Here's our table. Um, let's grab the date, which was that column that we created uh, with a, a bunch of dates. Uh, with a, um, we created that through uh, that one um, transformation. Then click the full text of the tweet itself. So if we drag this out and we can bring this out, now we have a table of tweets and dates associated with those. And you could also start adding uh, filters or slicers, I'm sorry, which filter the data. If we click that, and then we're gonna add our date column to that. Um, and I only have one date in here, but if they had multiple dates, you'd have a slider so you could pick your date. Just click, pick that and then it's gonna filter this. So very easy to do visualizations and um, slicers and filters in it. So yeah, thanks for watching, hope this helped.